Hi. 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 Uh. So guys, I hear you're interested in a bank loan. Here at Corpus Let Institute. me just interrupt you right there. My name is Jason, this is Ben, and we are Inventurepreneurs. We like to say we bring the future now. Why don't you close your eyes? I'm going to keep them open. I'll close Picture this with me. You and a couple buddies walking in the wilderness. It's a nature walk. You look down at a puddle. What do you see? It's your face. It's your reflection coming down over your eyes. Straight tuft of hair. Enter the first ever portable men's hair curler. Boom. Wait, wait, don't touch it. It's, it's a bit hot. The wand gets hot. Yeah. You smell that? That's success, Jason. Guys, I think it's the hair curler. It's still on. Oh, you know, it's still a proto, it's a prototype. And you know what, did we mention it's portable? Let's, yeah. Look, there's a it's, loop on the back. You can put it on your belt. Stand up, show, let me show You're you. You're gonna love this. When you see this, it goes right it. on the belt. It's okay. Put it here, no, turn I'm, on yours. I, I think we're good. We're good. Okay. We're okay. How much money are we talking here, guys? This is a smiley face. Do you guys even have a business plan? I just think if you would have closed your eyes, all of this would make sense right now. You know what? We're done here. You know what? We'll call you. If, if, if you change your mind. You call us. Right. Tell them. Thank okay. you. It's hot. I wish you would have just closed your eyes. I don't get it, man. Seriously. Just get Ah! Benedict Cover! Teleportation. Ooh. Teleportation. <laughs> Teleportation. Uh, Teleportation. Teleportation. <laughs> Maybe like backing up data in your mind. You don't need to read, just send this information to the splash card and put it in your brain. Like five minutes and you're done. I don't know if, if they have it in America, but like we don't have it in Africa, where you put your dirty dishes, just like put it in, and then it washes itself. Not a dishwasher. <laughs> How to make your own money, just to copy the money, so you don't have to work for it. So. Faster and cleaner transportation. No, it's not a dishwasher. <laughs> jetpacks would be cool, like, you know, personal jetpacks. It'd be really cool to have, like, jetpacks on, like, a day-to-day -day basis and get to fly everywhere you wanted to go. Or a flying car. Flying cars. Flying cars. An Iron Man suit. <laughs> that would be awesome. And then like a robotic arm takes it up and like cleans it and washes it and like throws all the like the food out. And the that sounds really stupid when you say it out loud now though. In the last 120 years, life expectancy has doubled. On average, we will live twice as long as people in the 19th century. We live in a world with antibiotics, advanced surgical procedures, and cutting edge innovation in medical sciences. A few years ago, my family got some really tough news. My older brother Kevin was out of town for work and he had a seizure in his hotel room. And after a number of tests, they found out that it was because he had brain cancer. And so over the next year, he first had surgery and then radiation and then chemotherapy. And what's amazing is that it worked. He was initially given an 18 month life expectancy, but that was over three years ago. He's lived the last two years totally cancer free. And it just makes me so thankful to live in this time of history where we have access to such amazing cutting edge treatments because of the advancements made in medical sciences. But about a week ago, while we're filming for this project, I got a text from Kevin and he had just gotten the results back from a routine scan, but this time they found traces of brain cancer. And so they put him right back on chemotherapy. And we always knew this was a possibility, 
The nature of the type of cancer he has is such that it has an extremely high likelihood of returning. And even though there's amazing treatments to help him fight the cancer, there's no treatments that can prevent it from coming back. And here's why I'm telling you this story. Because at some point in time, all of us face stuff like this, whether it's in our own health or whether it's in the health of someone we love. And in moments like that, it forces us to wrestle with the question, does God heal? And if you were to look through the pages of scripture, what you would find is that it's in God's nature to heal. Exodus 15, 26 says, I am the Lord who heals you. When the Bible talks about healing, it's not just talking about emotional or psychological or spiritual healing. It is all those things, but there's also physical healing. The Gospels are full of stories of how Jesus heals people miraculously. Our friend Crystal actually experienced this for herself in a very personal way. I was very athletic when I was a teenager, and I actually um, passed out after a race, which was very weird for me. Maybe three weeks later, I was taking a sweater off one day, and when my hands were raised like this, I couldn't breathe at all. Three or four weeks after that, one morning, I woke up with a huge lump on my neck. They did a chest x-ray, a CT scan, everything, and then they sent me to Children's Hospital in an ambulance. And within two and a half days, I had a biopsy, was diagnosed with cancer, and started chemo an hour later. So it was intense. And by the time they found it, I had actually only had like max two weeks left to live. The first time walking to the treatment room, that was, um, that was a scary walk down the hallway for sure. Because you just, you don't know what's gonna happen. The first week I was in the hospital, my youth group actually called me and they were all praying for me. Like the whole church was praying for me at that time. And that was pretty amazing actually seeing the support of the church uh, in that time. A year later, I was still on chemo, so it had been 20 months at this point. I was asked to sing at History Maker, or a youth convention, and uh, yeah, I don't know why I agreed to sing because I had a shot of chemotherapy before the long weekend and was on really heavy pills all those days. And I knew I was going to be feeling pretty sick, but for some reason I didn't say no. And yeah, I remember we played the Friday and the Saturday and I was pretty, feeling pretty ill. And as I was walking into the building, grumpy as ever, I felt the Holy Spirit say, uh, Crystal, something really exciting is going to happen for you tonight. I was sitting in the very back of the stadium beside a really good friend of mine, and all of a sudden, I felt the most powerful, beautiful, loving presence of God fall on me. And I could not move. I was stuck like this, and I just started to cry and to cry, and I've never felt anything like that. And all I could think was Jesus is about to heal me. And I have never been that confident in something in my entire life. And I had a headache and my headache left. And this heat went through my heart and this pain that was always in my kidneys left. And I didn't feel nauseous for the first time in almost two years. And I would have told everyone in the stadium that. I called my doctor a couple days later when I got home. And I told him what happened and my two head nurses and they ran tests over the next little while. And uh, yeah, there was no more cancer to be found. And um, my kidney test came back perfect and my heart results came back perfectly normal. And uh, my nurses really started to cry and my doctor seemed pretty stunned. And the homie grew up and his dad was an evangelist. And he went to lots of different meetings growing up and he actually saw a lot of people people healed and so he totally believed what happened to me but he told me later that he hadn't really thought of, of, of God for a really long time. So that was really cool, really cool. I've seen God heal people today. Yeah, I think so, for sure. Yes, I, I, do, I do believe that. I don't know, I haven't witnessed anything like that but I've heard stories and I think it's really cool. What seemingly are miracles can definitely happen, um, but that there's some sort of science behind it, whether or not we've discovered what that actually is. Doctors you. I think that he can heal people like right away, or there's a process to healing, but I definitely believe that he heals people. So yeah, I think it's more on your brain than in upstairs. I really don't believe in that. I think you heal yourself. I don't really think it's a thing. It's really just nonsense to me. I think it's just too ridiculous to think that God had any real play in it. If, if God created us from nothing in the first place, of course he could heal us back to life within seconds. I don't know. I mean, stranger things have happened.
the Gospels show how Jesus had power and authority to heal. Matthew says, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. But it wasn't just Jesus. He gave his followers power and authority to heal people too. As you read the book of Acts, you see the disciples went around healing the sick. And if you look at church history, all the way down the centuries, you see followers of Jesus doing the same. Even today, God is still using his people to heal others. He gives you authority. This isn't just for special Christians who are super spiritual. This is for every Christian. Yeah, he invites you and I to tell others the good news about Jesus and to heal those who are sick. On Alpha, we want to give everyone an opportunity to receive prayer for healing. Our friend Josh was running Alpha, and one night there was a girl who asked to receive prayer for healing. She had scars up and down her arms from self-harm. She often wore long sleeves to cover all the marks. But that night, her friends prayed for her, and they watched as the scars started to fade and then disappear right in front of their eyes. Josh described the group's reaction in a Facebook message. There was a bit of screaming, as well as a lot of excitement, as everyone realized what was happening. I love this story. I think one of the reasons it stands out to me, on top of how amazing it is that her scars were healed, is that the healing on the outside is like a picture of what God does on the inside. He brings healing to our hearts. When we pray for healing, sometimes people get healed, and it's so amazing. But other times, for reasons I don't fully understand, some people aren't healed. One of our good friends, Joey, was in a brutal motorcycle accident about 10 years ago. His leg broke into more than 150 pieces, and ever since he's been in constant pain. He's been prayed for hundreds of times, and yet he hasn't been totally healed. What's amazing about Joey is that even with the pain, he's one of the most joyful guys we know, and his faith in God and his love for people is inspiring. So even though he hasn't been totally healed, we keep praying and trusting God with Joey's life and healing. Father Renero Cantalamessa says, we're free and able to ask the Holy Spirit at any time to heal us. But if the Spirit does not do it, there's no reason to think that it's because we have no faith or that God does not love us or that God is punishing us. Now, whether we experience a miracle of healing or not, this is still certain. God loves us and he wants to meet each one of us right in the middle of our difficult situation. I experienced this a few summers ago when my grandpa got sick. My family and I prayed desperately that God would heal him, but eventually it was clear that grandpa wasn't getting better. And even though this was so heartbreaking for us, right in the midst of it, we felt God give us this amazing peace that carried us through it. It takes faith to believe that God can heal in this life but it also takes faith to believe that we'll spend eternity with Jesus when we die. We knew that my grandpa had already experienced the miracle of salvation, of new life in Jesus, and that's the greatest miracle that any of us can receive. The Bible promises that one day Jesus will come again and God will renew all things. And there are many references to Jesus' return in the New Testament. That's when he'll establish his kingdom in fullness. It will be a day of judgment and a day of restoration. All wrongs will be made right. There will be a new heaven and a new earth, and there will be no more sickness, no more suffering, and no more brokenness. St. Paul writes about how there's a longing in each of us for that day when Christ returns, because we are waiting for the redemption of our bodies. Sometimes in Vancouver, after a long cold winter, we get a few really warm days in the early spring. It stops raining, the sun comes out, and it feels like summer, and suddenly everyone's in shorts and t-shirts. But summer hasn't arrived. The next week it's freezing cold again, what we experience there is a taste of summer. It tells us that summer is coming. And when Jesus heals people, it's like a taste of the future. It tells us that one day everyone's going to be healed. As a child, I played a lot of basketball and I think that's where the problem with my knee started. And it became worse after joining the Royal Marines. The tendons were, were, were ripped, the ligaments were ripped. And as a result, my kneecap was sort of free floating in my leg as it were. I couldn't walk for a long period of time, I couldn't sit for a long period of time and in itself running was completely out of the question. I got a U-turn when I came to Alpha. I was, I was invited, reluctantly accepted, I must highlight, you know, very cynical about the entire thing. And then a chap said he had a word of knowledge about this young man who has this knee problem and it's been ongoing for a long time, he needs to get it sorted, and he, if he wants prayer, he can raise his hand. And I thought, oh my goodness, this is me. 
who's, who told him about it? Who told him about my knee? And I cautiously raised my hand to my ear, just, just the height. And two, two guys came over and said, do you want to go on prayer? I said, yes. And I said, I'm, I'm the knee guy. Yeah, you could say so you could pray, and I really appreciate that. And they started praying for me and uh, placed his hand on my knee. And just 30 seconds, 45 seconds into prayer, there was this warmth in my knee. And then there was a tingling, which is a bit ticklish, so I started laughing. And at, at the end of the prayer, there was a slight difference. I could, I could sense there was a change. But I wanted to make, make, make sure that actually it is good to go. So I told them, step back, I need to test this. I absolutely just, just landed on my knees very heavily, like boom, on the, on the ground, and there was no pain. I just couldn't believe it, that after such a long period where I've been to top doctors, top physiotherapists in the armed forces trying to get this sorted, you know, and within three to five minutes, it's all gone. So the next day, I went for a six mile run, and in the end, I felt absolutely fine. In high school, my younger brother got diagnosed with leukemia. You know, during that time, there was there's a real risk that we could lose him. And my mom, you know, was praying for him, had him on every prayer chain, you know, she could find. Just like every step of the way, it was like, this isn't possible. And then it it, it was possible. Now he's totally, he's totally good. He's oh, he's going to college and, and it's great. I had a concussion, I had a whiplash, and um, we did a prayer ministry and completely healed. I, I got confirmation from my um, physiotherapist. I saw him one week when I was like really in pain and then the next week he's like, what happened? This is like night and day. The year after I graduated, my mother was diagnosed with stomach cancer and she went to the hospital to do like a major surgery and like something went wrong in the surgery and we didn't know she was going to come back out. But her whole congregation and everything was constantly visiting her and praying for her all the time and miraculously she did come out and she's still doing well today. So. God invites us to be a part of bringing healing to others. If God calls you into the medical profession, then that's an amazing calling. My wife, Melissa, works as a nurse for sick babies. She's a part of an amazing team of people that use their knowledge and their skills to bring healing through medicine. And throughout history, Christians have done this. If you look at the history of hospitals, for example, they were often started by Christians. In 325 AD, after the first big gathering of the church leaders, Christians started to build hospitals in every town in which there was a cathedral across the Roman Empire. The oldest hospital in Canada was founded in Montreal in 1645, and it was started by a Christian nurse. In the 1880s, the Methodists began opening hospitals in cities across the United States to serve people of all religious backgrounds and beliefs. When you pray for someone to be healed, remember, it's God who does the healing, not us. And there's no magic technique to get exactly what we want. No, when we pray, it's with simple faith and with love. And in the New Testament, we're encouraged that when we pray, to pray in Jesus' name. Jesus taught that there's power and authority in his name. Another thing we see in the New Testament is this idea of laying hands on people. As you pray, you could ask the person you're praying for if it's all right if you laid a hand on their shoulder or maybe on the part that hurts. And listening is a huge part of prayer. Listening to the person you're praying for, but also listening to God. Sometimes God will speak to us in advance about who or what we should pray for. And often on Alpha, small group hosts and helpers will ask God if there's specific things that he wants to heal. And he may speak to them by bringing an image or a picture to their mind. We've heard a lot of stories of people being healed when someone gets a word or picture and it's exactly about the thing that the person was suffering with. And after you pray for someone, ask them how they're doing, ask them how they're feeling. That way you know how you can continue to pray. Because if they've been healed, well then you can celebrate with them and thank God for what he's done. And if they're not healed, if you want, you could ask them if you could continue to pray. Sometimes when we pray, people are healed in part, but not totally healed. Jesus once laid hands on a man who was blind, and then he asked him if he could see anything. And the man said, I see people, they look like trees walking around. 
So Jesus stretched out his hand, putting them on the man's eyes a second time. And this time, as he opened his eyes, the man could see everything clearly. His eyes were completely healed. So a few summers ago, I spent an entire week in the kitchen at a youth camp washing dishes. And one of the people that I was washing dishes with was a girl called Shanna. Now, when I first met her, I noticed pretty quickly that she was severely cross-eyed. And I learned after we talked a little bit that this had really impacted her life. And so one night at this camp, there was an opportunity for youth to pray for one another for healing. And this wasn't the first time that Shanna had been prayed for, but even still, she went up and asked for prayer. So I saw her later that night in the dish pit, and I noticed right away when she looked at me, she'd been healed. I could see it in her eyes. They were working together perfectly. Her whole countenance was different. So I remember the next day, I had to double check to see if it was real, and it was true. God had healed her. Now that was over five years ago, and she's still healed today. Even her doctor noticed a difference. And this changed everything in her life. The way she looks at people, her confidence, the way she reads, the way she sees everything. Pastor John Wimber said, when we prayed for no one, no one was healed. Now we pray for everyone, and some are healed. This is what we've experienced, and that's why we keep praying. And the thing about taking time to pray for one another is it's another opportunity for God to fill our hearts with his Holy Spirit. Whether we're healed or not, we often leave with a greater sense of God's love and power. So I wonder if you'd be willing to give this a try. Would you let someone pray for a need that you might have? Or would you be willing to pray for someone else to ask God to heal them?